triangle congruence, CPCTC, and the distance formula. This is lesson 4.7a. We've got 12 previous lessons for chapter 4 that are in the geometry playlist in the description. CPCTC is an abbreviation for the phrase corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And it can be used as a justification, you know, a reason, in a proof after we have proven two triangles congruent. Congruent triangles can be used to find the distance between two points that is difficult to measure, like the distance across a canyon, or a river, or a lake. To design a bridge across a river, we need to find the distance from A to B. So that would be from these two points here. When we locate points C, D, E in the figure, C, D, E, and segment D, C right here is 500 feet, Segment CB right here is also 500 feet, and segment DE right here is 600 feet. So what's segment AB? What would be this figure distance? Well, angle D and angle B are congruent because they're both right angles. This angle and this angle are right angles. They're both right angles. Segment DC is congruent to segment CB because DC is equal to CB. They're both 500 feet. This one is congruent to that one. And angle DCE is congruent to angle BCA because they're vertical angles and they're congruent. So this inner angle here and this angle here across from each other are vertical angles and they're congruent. Therefore, triangle DCE is congruent to triangle BCA by ASA, angle, side, angle. We could even say leg acute angle. And by CPCTC, segment ED is congruent to segment AB. So if they're congruent, they're equal, right? So it's 600 feet. So we had a side, an angle, and a side that were congruent, so the triangles are congruent. The corresponding parts are angle D and angle B, the two right angles, segment DC and segment CB, that's the sides that were 500 feet, and angle DCE and angle BCA as vertical angles, so we have angle, side, angle, and they're congruent. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, that's CPCTC. Kenny wants to find the distance JK across the pond. She set up triangles to find the distance. So segment JL, the orange one, is congruent to segment LN, this green one. They're both 19, 19 feet. And the purple one, segment ML, is congruent to the red one, segment KL. And angle MLN is congruent to angle JLK because they're vertical angles. These two angles right here are congruent. They're vertical angles. And the blue one, segment MN, is given that it's 41 feet. So MN is going to be congruent to JK because of CPCTC. We have sides and angles and sides that are congruent. So segment JK is 41 feet. It's 41 feet across the pond. Here's proving congruent parts congruent. This is a flowchart proof. We've got this diagram, and it's given that segment AB is congruent to segment DC. And We've got angle ABC is congruent to angle DCB, so this angle is congruent to this angle. We need to prove that angle A is congruent to angle D, so we have our flowchart proof. We have our two givens, that these sides are congruent and that these angles are congruent, and we have segment BC is congruent to segment CB. The hypotenuse for this triangle is congruent to the hypotenuse for this triangle because they share it. That's the reflexive property of congruence. And because we have a side and an angle and a side that are congruent, we have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB because of side angle side, which brings us to angle A is congruent to angle D because of CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Here's using CPCTC in a two column proof. Take a look at this drawing. It's given that segment EG is parallel to segment DF. We can see the little arrow parallel marks that these two lines are parallel. It's also given that segment EG is congruent to segment DF. We need to prove that this top ED segment is parallel to this bottom GF segment. We have our two givens as numbers one and two. And number three, we have Angle EGD, this one right here, is congruent to angle FDG, this one here, 
because of the alternate interior angles theorem, we have parallel lines. We look at GD as the transversal, so these two are alternate interior angles. Then we have number four, segment GD is congruent to segment DG. They're sharing a hypotenuse, so that's a reflexive property of congruence. Number five is that triangle EGD is congruent to triangle FDG because of sine angle side, side, angle, side from numbers one, three, and four. Number six says angle EDG, this little one up here, is congruent to FGD, this little one down here, because of CPCTC. And that brings us to number seven, what we were trying to prove, that segment ED is parallel to segment GF because of the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. So remember, alternate interior angles theorem said, if this is the transversal, that we have parallel lines, so these alternate interior angles are congruent. The converse says if these two angles are alternate interior angles and they're congruent, then these are parallel lines, okay? So remember, when we're planning a proof, we can work backwards. To show that segment ED is parallel to segment GF, we can look for a pair of angles that are congruent, and then we can look for triangles that have these angles, okay? We can also use CPCTC when triangles are on a coordinate plane. We use the distance formula to find the lengths of the sides of each triangle. So this is the distance formula right here. And if you see this P sub 1, P sub 2, you might see a D there instead for distance. But this P sub 1, P sub 2 is the distance between point 1 and point 2 of the two points that we're trying to find the length of the, of the side or the graphed line on the coordinate plane. Then after showing the triangles are congruent, we can make conclusions about their corresponding parts. So, on the left side, these use corresponding parts to prove triangles are congruent. On the right side, CPCTC uses congruent triangles to prove corresponding parts are congruent. So it's flipped around. This uses parts, this uses triangles. So for this one, side, 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 sine angle, side, angle, side, angle, and hypotenuse leg, you first prove the parts are congruent. You first prove the sides are angles that correspond are congruent and then prove the triangles are congruent. For this one, we first prove the triangles are congruent and we locate and show congruent triangles and then use them to prove sides or angles are congruent, okay? So here's using CPCTC in the coordinate plane. So if you can see, we've got six ordered pairs. We got three blue and three dark pink. And the three blue ones are for this triangle and the three dark pink ones are for this triangle. We need to prove that angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. So we have to prove that this angle here is congruent to this angle up here. We plot the points on a coordinate plane and draw the triangles. Okay? Then we use the distance formula to find the lengths of the sides of each triangle. So here's the distance formula. Now it's got a D equals in front. And you can see X sub 2 minus X sub 1. So we're going to do X sub 2 would be B and X sub 1 would be A. So we'd have 5 minus 2. Then we do y sub 2 minus y sub 1, so we got a negative 1 minus a 3 for a, b. Well, 5 minus 2 is 3. We need to square it. We need to add negative 1 minus 3. That means we're going to have a negative 4 squared that gives us the square of 9 plus 16, which equals a square of 25, which equals 5. We do the same thing for d, e, the corresponding side, and we have a 0 minus 4 and a 2. We have a 0 minus a negative 4, and we have a 2 minus a negative 1. We get 4 squared plus 3 squared under our radical sign, which gives us a square root of 16 plus 9, which equals square root of 25, which is 5. So these are the same. These corresponding sides are the same. We do the same thing with the other ordered pairs. We plug them in as x sub 1 minus x, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And we get that BC is the square root of 17, which corresponds to EF, which is the square root of 17. AC, we get the square root of 10, which corresponds to DF, which is the square root of 10. So we've got these pairs that are congruent. So AB is congruent to DE, BC is congruent to EF, AC is congruent to DF. We have these three congruent pairs, therefore triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by side, 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 side. And angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF by CPCTC. 
congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right? So, if this looks a little confusing for you, I tried to use color, but you can look at these ordered pairs and see what I did. Just remember that when you are doing 2 minus a negative 1, when you subtract a negative, you add the opposite, so we have 2 plus 1. That's why we had a 3 squared, okay? So remember that. Here's a negative 2 minus 2. That gave us a negative 4, because that 2 was negative. See? All right? So we can base assumptions about parts of a triangle on information about other parts. And remember that side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and hypotenuse leg use corresponding parts to prove triangles congruent. And CPCTC uses congruent triangles to prove corresponding parts are congruent. Okay? It's flipped around. Our next lesson is proving the parallel or perpendicular lines theorem 4.7b. So, hope this was helpful. I always say that. And I hope you're doing well. And I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you next time. Hit the like button if you can. Bye.